Now I would like to review our types of magnetic ordering and also add to our list some uh, exotic types of ordering as well uh, to give a more complete picture. So we talked about uh, paramagnetic uh, substances. So when we have a paramagnet, it means the following. If we have a magnetic field, a paramagnetic material will be attracted. So it's attracted by a magnetic field. It, it, it does have a susceptibility chi which is positive, but it is typically small in the range 10 to minus uh, 6 to 10 to minus 4. The susceptibility varies with temperature as 1 over T and uh, typical examples of paramagnetic materials could be for example sodium and aluminum uh, and it has a zero moment zero magnetization with uh, no external field with zero applied field and uh, that is due to a random uh, distribution so the moments will be randomly distributed due to uh, the thermal uh, agitations um, the second type we talked about was diamagnetic so when we have a diamagnetic material uh, it's going to be repelled by a magnetic field uh, we will see that it has a susceptibility which is not temperature dependent it is negative uh, uh, small in the range minus 10 to minus 6 to minus 10 to minus 4 uh, we can give example uh, copper for instance um, on the other hand superconductors are uh, perfect diamagnets which we will talk about in more detail later a perfect diamagnets the susceptibility is minus one that's what we mean by perfect diamagnet it has a zero magnetization zero moment uh, with zero field zero magnetic field due to a random distribution of moments as well then we talked about a ferromagnetic ordering so for ferromagnetic ordering we have uh, the moments aligning uh, pointing in the same direction the susceptibility when it is magnetized of course is much greater than uh, one the susceptibility is field dependent uh, the magnetization curve m versus h is hysteretic uh, it has a net finite moment after magnetization of course at zero field due to remnants at zero field after uh, magnetizing we can give examples uh, typical examples iron nickel cobalt etc then we talked about a ferry magnetic ordering F 
ferrimagnetic means uh, we have up moments and down moments but not equal in size so there is a net moment so two uh, sub lattices that are non-equivalent they don't uh, compensate for each other example is magnetite or lodestone Fe304 um, we have anti-ferromagnetic ordering in the case of anti-ferromagnets we have two spin sub lattices that are exactly canceling each other so we have two equivalent sub lattices uh, the susceptibility is small it is positive at the nail temperature T is equal to Tn nail temperature it becomes a paramagnet so if you look at susceptibility versus temperature you see that in the antiferromagnetic phase it increases and then it has a cusp at the nail temperature and then it starts decreasing as 1 over T as uh, behaving like a regular paramagnet uh, examples of antiferromagnets include manganese oxide iron oxide cobalt oxide etc now I want to talk about some other uh, classes so uh, a ferromagnet becomes uh, super paramagnetic at some point uh, so let's talk about this concept super paramagnetic uh, that is to say you still have uh, these moments lined up in some certain direction but they can uh, uh, spontaneously flip uh, to a opposite direction they this is basically thermally unstable net moment that's what super paramagnetic uh, means so we will also talk about that when we consider uh, memory applications of magnetic materials now uh, I would like to talk about more exotic cases uh, one of them is uh, spin glass so spin glass is basically a random orientation of moments so you have the moments uh, pointing in uh, random directions there is no net moment but there is no net moment even with an applied magnetic field if it's perfectly random uh, like this the the moments are tied to the lattice it's as if they are frozen so it's like a, a liquid that is frozen tight to the lattice not able to move so we have fixed random orientation of moments that's a spin glass uh, another scenario is helimagnetic so you can see here a uh, helimagnetic ordering this happens in materials like iron germanium manganese silicide etc you have uh, the magnetization rotates uh, in the material
it's following a helical structure, so that's helimagnetic. Uh, we have also um, asperomagnetic. So you can see what we mean by asperomagnetic, speromagnetic and sperimagnetic. So these are happening for um, alloys that basically contain a ferromagnet and a rare earth material. For example, in the case of samarium cobalt, we have asperomagnetic ordering. You can see that the moments are uh, distributed uh, like this. So it's like forming a, a random distribution, but only on the positive side. So you have a net non-zero uh, moment. Uh, for the case of sparomagnetism, which happens, for example, for yttrium cobalt, you have, uh, the, again, the rotation of moments, so all angles are possible, the, which gives you a zero magnetization. Uh, and for sperry magnets, like iron terbium, you have, for example, a terbium moment pointing up, but iron moments pointing down, or vice versa. So that gives you a net uh, magnetization at the end. So uh, sperry magnetic materials like iron terbium uh, are used in magneto-optic recording, for example. So this finds an application in magneto-optic uh, recording. And some of these um, asperomagnetic uh, materials, uh, they are uh, like samarium cobalt, they are uh, permanent magnets. Okay, so uh, obviously one can uh, look up uh, other types of magnetic ordering. So the, it's also possible to have asperomagnetic and speromagnetic phases coexisting in the same material under certain conditions, etc. So that, that basically goes beyond the basics of magnetism. So this, these are more exotic orderings that you can observe. Okay, so to summarize, we talked about paramagnets. Paramagnets are attracted by a magnetic field. Susceptibility is positive and small. It's inversely proportional to temperature. It has zero moment at zero field with random distribution. Diamagnets are repelled by a magnetic field. No temperature dependence for susceptibility, small and negative. And superconductors are perfect diamagnets with susceptibility minus one. Uh, again, we have zero moment with zero field random distribution. Ferromagnets show hysteretic behavior in the magnetization curve. Susceptibility is field dependent. There is a net finite moment at zero field after magnetization. Ferry magnets also have a net moment, but uh, we have they consist of two sublattices. One sublattice only cancelling part of the other sublattice, so that gives us a net. Uh, moment at zero field materials like magnetite anti ferromagnets on the other hand have a complete cancellation in the two spin sub lattices the susceptibility is small and positive it increases with temperature after the nail temperature it becomes a paramagnet and it goes as 1 over T uh, for ferromagnets, we also have a phase transition. Uh, so a ferromagnet becomes a paramagnet at T equals Tc, so-called Curie temperature. Uh, Superparamagnetism is basically referring to a ferromagnetic material that has become thermally unstable so that it still has a net moment but the moment can spontaneously flip uh, from one direction to the other due to thermal agitations. And then we talked about more exotic structures, helimagnetic structures where the magnetization rotates in the material. Uh, for example, manganese, silicon, iron, germanium, and these types of materials, you have uh, skirmion formation, for example, that will be of interest to us later on. Uh, we have spin glass structures where we have fixed moments uh, that are randomized with no applied, with an, even with an applied magnetic field, there is almost no response. They are uh, 
strongly tied to the lattice. Uh, then we have for uh, materials that contain a rare earth a component and a ferromagnetic material alloys like samarium cobalt, yttrium cobalt, iron turbium, asperomagnetism, speromagnetism and sperimagnetism. For asperomagnetism, for example, you can see the distribution of magnetic moments is like this, where you have the moments uh, rotating uh, through some angle but only in uh, for positive values for example so that you have <coughs> a net moment not net magnetization for sperimagnetism you have uh, one spin sublattice and the other uh, spin sublattice that has a rotation of the magnetic moments having a net moment uh, as a result, like iron terbium, which is used in magnetic optic recording, samarium cobalt in permanent magnets, and then we have also not so useful uh, ordering, for example, in sparomagnetism, yttrium cobalt, where you have all directions, the rotation of uh, moments, um, basically giving you a net zero magnetization at the end.